This is absolutely unbelievable. Ukraine for the very first time destroyed a Russian submarine and another major ship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. At this point it is a total humiliation for the Russian Navy and Ukrainians just inch one step closer towards the liberation of Crimea. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. It is back. So, today, in one of Russian public buses, you were able to see this guy who was practicing for his fight against NATO and Western representatives. But to be honest, he did not look threatening or his punches were not that much even convincing. And I personally decided to call this guy the Ethanol Warrior. So just please let me know in the comments if you think you will be able to defeat him. And if you think you will, can you please like this video and subscribe to my channel, because we need powerful people in the Russian dude army. <laughs> you can also follow me on Instagram to see how I live outside of YouTube and we're almost at 8000 people. The link is down below. But okay, now let's get serious and let me give you just a couple of quick words about the Western military support to Ukraine, then we'll talk about the east of the country and finally about the south, where Ukrainians did the unthinkable. And first of all, Germany is pledging 20 armored personnel carrier murders to Ukraine and also two Vincent One tanks for demining the territories, which are crucial for the current stage of Ukrainian counteroffensive. And then we have the statement from Bulgaria, which is mentioning that they want to put a NATO base on its territory, preferably by the end of 2025, and it will cost approximately 50 million euros. And I mean, what else can I say here? Putin and his goal about not letting NATO expand objectively pretty much failed. So congratulations, Vladimir, you played yourself. And so yes, now as promised, let me give you a brief update from the east of the country, where Ukrainians finally found a way to bypass the defenses of the Russian modern tanks. And first of all, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, still confrontations between Russians and Ukrainians continue along Kupiansk, Svatove, Kriminna front line. And right here, allegedly from the eastern front lines, we can see that Ukrainians are using the drones to bypass these nets, which Russians were using to cover their tanks. As you can see, all you need to do is to fly below this net and then just basically submerge inside the tank it will be completely obliterated, as you will be able to see from the second part of the video. And well, Russians decided not to stop here, so they introduced a new modification of protection for Russian tanks. This one in particular is for T-80VM, and now, instead of the net with the holes, they now have a solid roof. But unfortunately for them, as you will be able to see from this video, it did not work either. What a surprise. And by the way, fully uncensored episodes are available on my Patreon, the link is down below, there is still one week of free access. But there are some concerning news from the East, such as for example according to Anna Maliar, Russians finally started switching towards offensive and they do it mainly next to Avdivka right here and then also next to Marinka, but as of right now there is no significant progress or no significant threat to Ukrainians. And so yes, now let me give you a similar quick update from the south of Ukraine before I talk about the unthinkable events caused by Ukrainians. And so first of all, Ukrainians reported that they were able to destroy another T-90M modern tank of Russians along with its forces located in Poima. Moving a little bit to the east, Ukrainians using once again HIMARS were able to destroy a big artillery firing position of Russians located in Raiske. And as we get closer to Robotyne, Ukrainians were also able to destroy a Russian anti-aircraft missile system called Strela-10 located in Pshenichne. And because Russians do acknowledge that Ukrainians are getting more superior in the Zaporozhye front line, especially to the south of Robotyne, they started heavily concentrating on enforcing their second and specifically the third line of defense in Militopol and Tokmak direction. 
And as you can see from this satellite image, according to the mayor of Militopol, Ivan Fedorov, Russians now have a very complicated and deeply entrenched positions next to their third lines of defense. And above everything, it allows us to assume, since Russians are mainly concentrating on the third line of defense, they kinda do not care much about the second one, which most likely will be breached by Ukrainians in the near future. And unfortunately, another thing that Russians did recently is that there were yet more drone attacks against the city of Odessa. But just overall, in the last 24 hours, Ukrainians were able to intercept 32 out of 44 Russian Shahid drones. But without a doubt, the most significant event of the last 24 hours happened in Sevastopol. Once again, Ukrainians did at this point something truly impossible. They were able to attack the dry repair docks of Russians located in this city and reportedly even destroy some Russian vessels. It was even then hinted to us by the representatives of the Ukrainian army that they allegedly used storm shadow missiles. And then even the Ministry of Defense of Russia said that Ukrainians were using A missiles, which Russians obviously were able to intercept, but somehow <laughs> the remaining missiles were able to reach their final destinations. And as a result, later it was established that Ukrainians were able to destroy a Russian submarine Rostov-on-Don and a Rapucha-class landing ship Minsk. And just wrap your head around these numbers. The estimated price of a submarine is to be approximately at 300 million dollars. But besides that, this submarine was one of the main responsible submarines of Russians which were used to launch missiles against the southern territories of Ukraine. In addition to that, the landing ship of Russians, Minsk, was able to carry up to 500 tons of cargo and 225 paratroopers. And this ship was also mainly used to bring reinforcements to the territory of Crimea and southern Kherson. And in addition to that, a small reconnaissance boat of Russians, KS-701 Tunets, was also reportedly destroyed. And even though for several hours there were speculations whether this ship and submarine were actually destroyed or not, later we did receive this picture showing a big fire where this ship was pretty much stationed. And later on we even received these satellite images which showed us the comparison before and after which now leaves 100% no doubt that both ship and the submarine are now fully disengaged and not able to be used by the Russian Navy. And why this event is so important, it is because, like mentioned previously, Ukrainians did something impossible and unthinkable. They, this country, without pretty much extremely strong capabilities of finding and destroying submarines, was able to destroy one, the Russian submarine called Rostov-on-Don once again. It is also the very first time Ukrainians targeted a submarine and this attack was already a major success. And since Ukraine does not have a sophisticated surveillance equipment, planes, helicopters, their own submarines on ships which are able to track other enemies' submarines, which basically means that the only possible way for them to destroy one will be whenever it will be in the dock on repairs or anything like this. And this is exactly where Ukrainians did their deadly attack. And as you can see from this picture of the Russian Black Sea fleet, couple more vessels were just added to the ones being now totally destroyed. And just once again the landing ship Minsk was used to transport the military equipment and paratroopers to mainly Crimea and this submarine was used to attack the southern territories of Ukraine, which basically means by destroying them both, Ukrainians got a little bit closer, just one step closer towards the liberation of the peninsula. It is also extremely important event and news in the combination by the statement from the representatives of the Freedom of Russia Legion who said that their troops are extremely close to Crimea as well and they ask the local residents to report the data on the position of Russian military and forces located in Crimea. So it basically means it looks like that both Ukrainian army and the Freedom of Russia Legion are preparing a massive raid against Peninsula, maybe in the near future, so let's see. 
But nevertheless, the best reaction came to us from the Minister of Defense of Russia, Sergei Shaigu. Originally during the interview he was asked, will Russia win? And this is his response. Победим. And to be honest, this is a perfect meme template, which can be used with pretty much anything. For example, Mr. Shaigu, was the Russian landing ship and the submarine destroyed last night? Or another one, Mr. Shaigu, will Russia be able to keep Crimea? And <laughs> this one is probably my favorite. Mr. Shaigu, would you like a cup of Russian tea, which was prepared for you specifically by President Putin? And so yes, now I ask you guys to let me know in the comments your funniest questions to Shaigu and I will include them in my next episode. And if you don't want to miss these jokes, just please consider subscribing to my channel, it only takes one click. Thank you so much to all my patrons for your support and see you tomorrow.